Hi everybody, just wanted to do a quick review of uh, Mark Lewison's Evolver 63 show that I've been to today at Salford Keys, just near Manchester. Uh, so Mark Lewison, obviously the, the greatest Beatles historian that there is. Uh, some people don't like the fact that he's doing these shows. They say, you know, it's taking time away from him writing the next volume of Tune In, but I think my opinion here is the guy's got to live. He has to go and earn some money every now and again, and what better way to do it than to share his knowledge with shows like this. So this show is a follow-on to last year's Evolver 62. I, I went down to London last year to see that, and it was great. It was That was 62 short stories about the year 1962 and, and the Beatles in 62, and it was absolutely fascinating. This show, Evolver 63, a little bit slightly different format. So um, Mark did four shows last week down in London each one this time with a guest and it was a different guest each time so last weekend he had Samira Ahmed, Kevin Eldon, Harry Hill, Johnny Marr so a great selection of guests he had today the only one of these that he's doing up in the north Salford Keys uh, it was with Stuart McConey so Stuart's very respected writer music journalist I've, uh, I've read quite a few of Stuart's books over the years really like him he, he's the guy who coined the term Britpop uh, nearly 30 years ago now and uh, it was great to have Stuart there because he's, he's a funny guy to listen to anyway but also uh, he went to see the Beatles in, in 1964 when he was I think it was four years old he saw the Beatles so he's got some great memories from not strictly from 1963 but from that era anyway so it was Mark and Stuart in conversation really interesting you're never gonna have a time with Mark Lewison that isn't interesting that isn't going to be packed with all sorts of things things that you've never heard of things that you vaguely remember you might have heard of years ago but had forgotten and there were certainly some of those uh, and, and, and just his knowledge is just unsurpassed so I've written a, a few notes down here of uh, things that the main things that I remembered from the show and I'm glad that he's done the last show now because I can do this video without spoiling anything for anybody who's going to see the show in future. So I just want to pick out a few of my highlights. And uh, it's a really interesting thing as well with each of the shows having a guest. Some of the content of the show was very definitely led by Stuart's memories um, th and the things that he was bringing up. So each show is going to be completely different. I, I did sort of feel, you know, I wish I'd been at all four shows last weekend because they would have been different. Um, I guess the Samira Ahmed show would have been talking about her recent discovery of the Stowe School tapes, that really exciting find that she was instrumental in, um, in, in finding, basically, and bringing to the public's attention. So it, each show would be different, rather, whereas, whereas the Evolver 62 last year was very much a set show, and I think if you went to any of the shows, you'd have got pretty much the same thing. So I think one of the main words that I have, have thought for to, to sum up this show is connections. There are connections in the Beatles story in the most unlikely places where you don't think you would find them. Uh, and I've made a note of a couple of them. Um, so Mark's talking about 1963. Sorry if this camera's a bit shaky, I'm just holding my phone up sat down in the park. But Mark's talking about 1963 and uh, obviously it's that year when, such a pivotal year, it started the year with the Beatles being having a, a little fame in the UK but uh, as Mark so brilliantly puts it they were going around the UK lighting fires all over the place until it became one big inferno by the end of the year a really nice way that he put that but uh, it was showing the fact that the Beatles at that time were still replying to fan letters and, and writing handwriting replies themselves and it shows some really interesting ones from all four Beatles. Um, Paul McCartney saying, for example, you know, thanking fans for the letters and sorry, can't stay long. We're about to go on stage, for example. Uh, but there was a really interesting one where George Harrison had uh, done a nice sort of two page reply to a fan letter. And uh, he'd put in the second page about um, the, the songs that I'm enjoying at the moment. And it listed this one particular song. But the next the next song on the list was He's So Fine by the Chiffons. And there was a bit of a gasp went around the crowd uh, when, when that was revealed that George had sort of cited that song as a, an influence, you know. Real good job the court case a few years later didn't have access to that information. So that was one of those good revelations that you always get at a, a Mark Lewison show. Um, 
another connection as well that was a really interesting story that came mainly from Stuart McConey. So those of you that have seen the other shows probably didn't hear this at all. Um, if any of you are interested in um, Northern Soul music and how that came about in Wigan, Stuart told a really interesting story about a guy called, I think he was called Mike Walker, I'm going from memory here, who came to Wigan uh, as a result of the Beatles show in Wigan and sort of, I'm trying to remember the exact story, but it was something like he he stayed he stayed in Wigan. He, he was there as a direct result of the Beatles show there, but ended up staying and ended up launching Wigan Casino that launched the Northern Soul movement. So that was, although the Beatles themselves had nothing to do with Northern Soul, there's a real direct connection there between, you know, if, if the Beatles hadn't played in Wigan back then, this guy might not have been in Wigan to launch that particular scene. So I found that pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Stuart also told a, told a funny story about when he'd interviewed Paul McCartney. Um, and, and this was relevant to something that uh, Mark Lewison had brought up because he'd been talking about how not only the Beatles were having to deal with their new fame in 1963, but what a, a big thing it was for their families as well. So uh, Paul's dad, George's parents, Aunt Mimi, those, those kind of people how they were having to deal with a level of fame that um, families of other bands weren't having to deal with you know you could you could be um, you could be the relative of Jerry and the pacemakers and you could look back fondly on those sort of two or three years when oh that was fun do you remember that it was all went a bit mad for two or three years and then you go back to your normal life uh, and they were saying that that really wasn't the case for the Beatles families because they were just on such another level and Stuart told a funny story about when he interviewed Paul McCartney a few years back and he was trying to, he was trying to get across this point about, uh, wouldn't it be, um, you know, the, the effect on your families compared to everybody else's families. The way it came out from Stuart was to Paul McCartney, do you not ever wish that uh, you'd been in Jerry and the Pacemakers instead? And he said he got this absolutely sort of look from Paul McCartney as if to say, are you stark raving mad? Do you mean that? And, and Stuart had to let it drop. He didn't quite explain it properly to Paul, but it really sort of meant, do you not sort of wish that you'd just had that level of fame for a little while and your families had had that to, to cope with rather than uh, everything Beatles related that went on? So the way that Stuart told that, far better than what I've just told it, was quite a funny moment. Uh, but the big sort of wow story, and there's always one with, whether it's a Mark Lewison book or a show, it was one that afterwards I thought, you know, I vaguely remember hearing this somewhere before, but I probably would have never remembered it and I wouldn't have known the detail and I certainly wouldn't have seen the video footage that got showed. So they showed a clip of 1963 when uh, the Beatles were on um, the Helen Shapiro show. So of course they'd been touring with Helen Shapiro and her hits had dried up a little bit. Uh, so she, she was doing this show and she did this song uh, it was like a love song to a man. Uh, there's three verses in it, but at one verse she sang to John Lennon and she's, she's singing directly to him, he stood there. Then it moves on to, I think it was Ringo next, and then it was George and she sang this song. And Mark went on to explain about, uh, you know, you'll have noticed that Paul McCartney wasn't in that video. Why wasn't he? What was he doing instead? So he then showed a clip of what Paul was doing. He was working on a, he was on another part of that same show and he was judging a contest. It was a, a miming contest. So they had these four girls lined up, all miming to Brenda Lee's Let's Jump the Broomstick, fantastic song. And Paul McCartney was judging who was the best mimer. So it showed these girls all miming along to, your mama don't like it, your papa don't like it, etc. And Paul declares the winner, and this winning girl, she was probably, I don't know, 14, 15, 16 years old, comes up to Paul, collects a prize, and then Mark hits us with who this girl is. Uh, and I can't remember her name now. Some of you might, some of you might know the girl's name. You can uh, remind me if you can down in the comments. This same girl, about three years later, um, got disillusioned at home and ran away from home. You might see where this is going. And Paul McCartney saw this reported in the newspaper and wrote the song She's Leaving Home about this girl, this same girl that he'd met purely by chance, but not only by chance, but on, on TV, so it's all recorded and captured for posterity, that was her. Paul McCartney obviously would never have known that connection, um, but it was revealed to him many years later. Um, I think Mark said, 
by himself. I, I, I can't quite remember. Paul McCartney was staggered by the fact that this girl that he'd met on this Helen Shapiro TV show was the same girl that he then wrote She's Leaving Home about. So that was like the big gasp moment from the crowd. And like I say, you're always going to get one of those in the Mark Lewison show. Um, they were talking about She Loves You as well, the fact that, you know, we're coming up to... Um, that, that was 1963. Summer of 1963 was when that was recorded. And just pure coincidence, today being June the 25th, Mark just slipped in casually the fact that... Um, oh yeah, today is the 60th anniversary of She Loves You being written. They wrote it in a hotel room in Newcastle, as they often did with some of those early songs. They'd write it in a bus, um, in a hotel room. He said, yeah, they were playing in Newcastle, June 25th, 1963. That's when they wrote She Loves You. So we're there talking about the Beatles in 1963. And probably, I don't know whether any of us had clocked this fact already, but we were there on the 60th anniversary of She Loves You being written. So that was, uh, that was another nice little moment. So... Uh, yeah, you're always going to have an interesting time. If you ever get a chance to go and see Mark Lewis, and if you've not seen him already, um, if you have, you'll know you'll know what I'm saying. It, but if you haven't got a chance, if you've not had a chance, go see a Mark Lewis and show when you can. Um, as much as anything, we need to support this guy financially so he can carry on writing these books. Um, he didn't agree, he didn't address the matter of when will Volume Two be out. You know, let's give the guy a break. I know it's taking forever, but. The, the level of detail that he's going into, which he did, he did touch upon today, um, little bits about the level of the, the level of depth this book is going to go into is insane, and it takes such a long time. But um, it was a great show. I'm, I'm actually seeing Mark and Stuart McConey again next Saturday down in London, um, in in a, in another show. But they're both guests on somebody else's show. It's, uh, some of you might know I am the Egg Pod podcast uh, is doing a live Chris Shaw who does the I am the egg pod is doing a live show in London next Saturday I'm going down for that uh, there are I think there are four guests uh, one of them is Mark Lewis and one of them is Stuart McConey so I'll be seeing them again next week hopefully if my train gets into London on time I will also be able to go to the Paul McCartney photo exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery before the show fingers crossed so I, I hope to be able to bring you another video a bit like this in a week's time uh, reporting on that show and my visit to the portrait gallery um about what i thought of that so um yeah there you go that's that's the the show uh i've got i've done some other videos about 1963 um a couple of specific events that happened uh, in 1963 that um i'm going to put links to at the end of this so if you want to watch those if you're in a beatles in 1963 kind of mode you might be interested in these uh, videos that are knocking around here so anyway, thank you very much for watching. Leave me comments as always. Um, oh, and lovely to speak to the people who came to say hello to me today. Um, that was uh, there was Anthony, Phil, um, and his friends, and a few other people who didn't give me the names. But nice to see you all. Anyway, yes, those pro those videos should be about there by now um, about the Beatles in 1963. So thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.